Whenever you see videos about the history of football, a lot of the beginning focuses on what happened before the official rules were set. Things such as its ancestry being in ancient China, the violent town-wide gains from medieval times and things like that. I want to do things a little differently, however. While the normal histories touch upon the uh, results of famous games of the past, I want to do a deep dive into results and standings and talk about things you don't always hear about on football history videos. And with that, welcome to the history of football. I'll begin with the first ever organised tournament of any football rules, the Yudan Cup in 1867, which had some interesting stipulations. All matches would be 90 minutes and kick off at 3pm, although that possibly would be the only traditional football thing about it during those times. The games would be played under Sheffield rules, and they would have two umpires, one referee, and each team would field 12 players. If matches were tied, up to an hour of extra time was played under next goal wins. One other tidbit of background to the competition is the name. The cup was named after its sponsor, local theatre owner Thomas Udan, who had provided the trophy. Twelve teams took part. Initially there was a 13th, however the famous Sheffield FC declined to participate. And in the first round, Norton, Mackenzie, Hallam, Norfolk and Milton all made it through to the next round with straightforward wins, while a sixth team, Broomhall, also made it through, although theirs was one on Rouges after a nil-nil draw. Rouges being an old school type of tiebreaker involving putting the ball between flags by the goal or something along those lines. In the next round, three teams qualified for the semi-final stage. Norfolk beating Broom Hall after extra time, Mackenzie beat Milton on Rouges and Hallam eventually defeated Norton on Rouges after a replay when no one was able to score anything in the first match, including during extra time. The fact we had three teams in the semi-finals then gave them an issue. How would they do the semi-finals? It was agreed that one team would receive a bye straight to the final. This honour fell to Norfolk, while Hallam would play Mackenzie in the actual semi-final. Hallam would win the match on Rouges after a nil-nil draw, leaving only them and Norfolk to battle it out for the trophy. And despite Norfolk getting a nice rest thanks to the bye, they ended up empty-handed when Hallam overcame them once again thanks to Rouges. After the final was played, it was decided that a second place playoff would be played between losing finalist Norfolk and losing semi-finalist Mackenzie, which Norfolk were able to win also thanks to the Rouges rule. Some side stories with the competition, according to reports and with the press at the time, some matches had attendances of up to 3,000, and despite plans on the contrary, the Udan Cup did not take place again, and Hallam FC still hold on to the trophy. They did lose it for some time, literally losing it, uh, but they were able to buy it back in 1997 when an antiques dealer contacted them to advise that they had it. After repurchasing, the trophy was valued by a silver specialist on BBC show Antiques Roadshow, and it was said to be worth at least £100,000. But it's not for sale, unfortunately. A few years later, the real thing kicked off. The first ever Football Association Challenge Cup, better known in years to come as the FA Cup, which as we all know is still alive and kicking nowadays. The rules, however, were a little different to how we know them now. There was no extra time in the event of a draw. Instead, there would either be a replay or in a more weird happening, both teams would progress to the next round. Also, in a rule similar to the Udan Cup, the game would be officiated by two umpires, one provided by each team, and in later rounds a referee would be added also. Finally, due to a quirk of how the laws of the game were introduced at the time, the corner kick only became a thing from the semi-finals onwards. While all member clubs of the FA were eligible, only 12 chose to enter. These teams were Barnes, Civil Service, Clapham Rovers, Crystal Palace, not that one, Hampstead Heathens, Harrow Checkers, Harrow School, Lausanne, probably not the Swiss town, Royal Engineers, Upton Park, Wanderers and Windsor Home Park. But before the first round took place, Harrow School, Lausanne and Windsor Home Park all withdrew. Luckily for the FA though, another six clubs agreed to join the fun. Donington School, Hitchin, Maidenhead, Marlow, Rygate Priory and Scottish Club Queen's Park. And so the first ever FA Cup began on the 11th of November 1871. And due to the odd amount of teams in the draw, Hampstead Heavens received a bye to the second round, leaving us with seven ties in the first round. Only four of these matches actually took place. 
Reigate Prior and Harrow Checkers withdrew after the draw, giving walkovers to Royal Engineers and Wanderers respectively. Plus, Queen's Park and Donington School could not agree on a venue for their match, so both teams were permitted to progress to the next round. In the matches that actually took place, Barnes defeated Civil Service 2-0 in the first ever FA Cup match. In a contest between two teams that still exist, Maidenhead beat Marlow by the same scoreline, and Clapham Rovers put three past Upton Park with no reply. The fourth and final match saw Hitchin and Crystal Palace, not that one, play out a nil-nil draw, and both teams headed into the second round also. Queen's Park and Donington School ended up drawn against each other again in the next round, but only one of the teams would go through this time, as Donington School chose to withdraw, moving the Scottish team to the quarter-final without playing a game. In the second round, Barnes and Hampstead Heathens drew 1-1, and unlike the drawn match in the first round, a replay took place, with Hampstead winning 1-0 to progress. The results of the three other games saw Crystal Palace, not that one, overcome Maidenhead 3-0, Wanderers beat Clapham Rovers 1-0, and Royal Engineers smash Hitchin 5-0. Like with the Udan Cup, they ended with an odd number of teams in a later round, meaning one of the teams in the quarterfinals would receive a bye, and the recipient of this would be Queen's Park, progressing them to the semi-final stage still without actually competing in a match. Royal Engineers continued their good form with a 3-0 beating of Hampstead Heathens, and Wanderers and Crystal Palace, not that one, had a scoreless stalemate. The draw continued more of the original competition's poor rule continuity, with no replay this time and both sides moving on to the semi-finals, which in reality probably helped with the semi-final stage as it meant there were actually four teams left to take part. Looking at the semis, which each took place at Kennington Oval in London, it may have been a boring one for any fans of both, as both matches finished goalless. Each tie went to a replay with Royal Engineers heading to the final after a 3-0 win against Crystal Palace, not that one. However, the other one did not go to plan as Queen's Park finally played their first match of the tournament in the 0-0 match. Queen's Park could not afford the second trip to London and withdrew though. This, despite Wanderers offering an extra 30 minutes play after to determine a winner. The final took place on the 16th of March 1872, also at the Kennington Oval in front of approximately 2,000 people, and saw Wanderers lift the inaugural FA Cup trophy with a 1-0 win over Royal Engineers thanks to a goal after 15 minutes from Morton Betts. Betts was playing under a pseudonym of A.H. Checker on the day and had been in the Harrow Checkers team earlier in the tournament. Although in reality, I'm not sure why this would have mattered as Harrow Checkers withdrew in the first round without actually playing a match. Plus, there was no cup tying rule during the tournament as the first ever England captain, Cuthbert Ottaway, had played for two teams earlier in the competition. And that will cover it for the first part of this statistical trip through football history. And these two tournaments were merely the beginning of what would become a larger competition. We have moved from the initial 12 entrants in the FA Cup to this past season having 735 different teams taking part. On the next edition, we will look at the start of international football and see how the second ever FA Cup went and whether the sequel was as good as the original.